This morning we're going to be looking at several scriptures and you can use the handout, of course, as provided. And our text is going to come from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 this morning. You know, we're doing a series about got to stay connected and more than ever before in today's time, it's so vitally important that we stay connected with God. But sometimes we just don't always feel connected. Sometimes we don't always feel plugged in. Why is it I just don't feel like I know God as well as I should? Why is it that even though I know that I need to dig deeper in His Word, I know I need to sit down and study it more, I just don't do it? Why is it that I believe in who He is and who He claims to be, but deep down inside, I just have a little distrust or a lack of trust in Him, I guess. Have you ever noticed the songs that we sing in the hymns, the traditional hymns? We sing, things, we sing hymns like, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. But is it? We sing victory in Jesus. But do we feel the victory? We sing there is power in the blood. Do we feel the power? We sing what a friend we have in Jesus. Do we truly have that intimate closeness that we need? Most people today, I'd say about all people, number one concern in life is about what happens afterwards. What happens when I leave this place called earth? The good thing about that is that, that that's good that people are concerned about that. And many people try to avoid it by covering up, by living a life like living it up or maybe occupying their time as much as possible so they don't have to stop and think about life afterwards. The problem is that concern never goes away. Well, what about the saved, the people that are Christians, the people that practice Christianity, the children of God, the born-again believers? Well, we know what happens in the end. And that ought to give us great comfort. But there's still one problem that we struggle with. And that is we have a tendency to let life get us down. It really brings us down. Even though we know the outcome, even though we teach, we preach, we hear, we listen, we know that God will take care of everything, we still have a tendency to really let life bring us down. I heard Pastor Rick Warren, the author of the book, Purpose Driven Life, and pastor of Saddleback Church in California, he once said he was talking to a man, and the man said, you know, I'm not as close to God as I need to be. He, he was a Christian man. He said, I'm not as close to God as I need to be. And, and I think the problem is, I just don't love God like I should. <laughs> Pastor Rick said, no, that's not the problem. The problem is, it's not that you don't love God. The problem is you don't realize how much God loves you. And you think about that for a minute. I mean, even standing here in the pulpit, I can't fully figure it out. I can't fully have it all down pat how much God loves us. I read it, I study it, I believe it, but I, my brain capacity cannot comprehend how much He truly loves us. You know, I... I love the Old Testament. I love the New Testament. And, and most people wonder about the Old Testament. I think a lot of times in the Old Testament, you can learn the characteristics of God. And, and I like teaching on it. I like learning because it brings me closer to God when, I, when I, I study the Old Testament as well as the New. You see, God had a relationship with Israel. And... In fact, at certain times, God would say He was the husband and Israel was His wife. And what I wonder about is why didn't He give up on Israel? You say, well, how, how, why would you say that? That was His chosen country. 
I mean, that was his chosen people. Well, before you pass judgment on what I just said, think about it. They were so wishy-washy in their spiritual life. One minute they were living for God, the next minute they were compromising and living in disobedience. And then they would end up in bondage and slavery. And then they would cry out to God and God would rescue them. And this just didn't happen one time, two times, three times, ten times, or fifty times. It happened over and over and over again. I mean, it was so bad, God actually called Himself the husband and His wife Israel, or Israel His wife, and He actually referred to them one time as spiritual whores. What he said. But he still loved them. So he, here again, I ask this question. Why is it, I don't always feel connected, why is it I, I'm not loving God like I should? The same reason, when you look at Israel, he's given us multiple chances. He's given us opportunities, mercy, and forgiveness. And what I want to do over the next several weeks is I want to talk about, as we continue on this series of sermons about staying connected, I want to talk about learning about God. I want these things that we say over the next several weeks to force us, to drive us closer to realize how much He really loves us. Not a question of whether you love Him. Because if we really love, if we really realize just some of how much God loved us, I don't think we'd have no choice but love Him back. If you would, and I'm going to have one point today. I don't even feel like a Baptist having one point. I need to have three. Just don't feel right. I'm going to have one point today. Before I share that with you, let's all stand for the reading of one verse. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 7. Chapter 5, verse number 7. Casting all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. One more time. Casting all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. Let's make our good confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'm about to receive the indestructible, incorruptible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is hungry. My heart is receptive. Speak, Lord. Thy servant hear it. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. ABC. Let me share number one, our first and only point today about God. About what does it take? What is it that we need to know? Now listen when I say this. We need to know that we know this point. Number one, and the only point today, He is a very caring Father. He is a very caring Father. Even in Psalms 103, 13, it says God has compassion, or it says the Father has compassion on His children, and God has compassion on those that love Him, or that fear Him. If you look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, this verse has a very, very deep meaning behind it. And I want to share some of the things with you about this verse. I want you to look at the first word there, casting. Everybody say casting. casting. Now in the word casting here, I looked this word up, and I always thought it meant something like you cast a rod when you're, when you're fishing or something and you're casting. Or, or, or simulating a throw, how you're throwing it. You're casting. Maybe throwing rocks and you're casting a rock across the lake or the river or something and watching it skip. I always kind of pictured like that. But that is totally, totally wrong. Actually, when it says casting, 
The word that basically is closest to it is drop it. Drop it. That's what it means. Drop it. You see, when you drop something, you don't have to do nothing. Gravity takes its course. You see, if you picture yourself something, a big old rock, stone, boulder or something, and you you got it barely up off the ground and, and you can't throw it. You can't even throw it a couple feet or uh, one foot. You can't even throw it hardly at all and you're struggling. Drop it. That's what it means here. Casting actually in the Greek means to, to drop it. Just drop it. It's like, wow. Drop it. Drop it. And what he's saying is, drop all your care, all your burdens, all your anxiety, all your problems. Just drop them. Drop them. Why not throw them? Why not toss them? Because it takes too much effort. Just drop it. Now, that's what he's talking about here. He's saying, he, he's saying just drop all your worries. Yeah, now, now, notice the second word there. All. I looked that up and found out in the Greek, it also has a meaning. The meaning of the word all here in the Greek actually means all. Yeah, I thought it did too. It means all. It means just drop all. Just in other words, you know what? You can't fix it. You can worry about it. It ain't, ain't going to do you no good. You, you can fret over it. But you know what? In the end of victory, you're just going to have to drop it. And that's what it means. Now, sometimes we don't always realize how much God cares. Does God care about your health? Absolutely. Does, does God care when you're frustrated? Yes. Does God care when you're having financial money problems? Yes. Does God care when you're having family problems and relationship problems? Yes. Does God care when you have an upset stomach and gas? Yes. Does God care when your face breaks out with pimples? Yes. God cares. That's what He says. He said, cast all your care. He cares about everything. God knows everything about us. Amen? Amen. And He cares about us. The Bible says, now get this, the Bible says that the hair on your hair, head is numbered. Not only is that they're numbered, God knows the original color of your hair. <laughs> so He cares. God knows everything about us. Now, here's the problem. Again, you and I don't always realize how much He truly cares. And I, and I know part of it we, we're just not going to grasp. But we need to understand more than what we do. And one of the biggest problems, one of the warning lights that we have in life is when we say we're a child of God and we're reading His Word, we're studying His Word, and we seem to be close to God, and we have a problem, you ain't going to believe this, but we have a problem with one certain issue. And that's relaxing. Relaxing. When we have a problem where we're chronically worried about something or get uptight over everything and all like that, we seem to question God. We seem to say, God, why can't something just go right? Now, I want to share some examples with you about this. I want you to think about what these people went through. Let's look at the first one. And that's in John chapter 11, verse 20 through 40. I'm not going to read that. It's there for your benefit. And most of you may know the story of, of John chapter uh, there. And it's where Martha and Mary have a brother named Lazarus. And Lazarus died. Okay? He dies. 
And his two sisters, Mary and Margaret. Now remember, Jesus loved them. They, they were very, very close. And Jesus loved them. And, and Jesus came to see them. And Martha went up to him first and said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even some, if you would, look, look at John chapter 11 there. And, and you can see where, where uh, verse is it? John chapter 11. Notice verse number 21. And Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou, had, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. Notice verse 32. And when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother would have died. Notice verse 33. And Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews weeping, which came with her. And he groaned. Everybody say groaned. Wow. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Verse 35, it says that Jesus wept. Now, notice verse 37. Or verse 36. And some of the Jews, everybody was standing around there, and some of them said, wow, he really loves them. He's crying. He's upset with it. He really loved them. And then others of them, verse 37, said, this man who healed the blind, healed the blind, that, that caused the blind to see, couldn't he have done something that caused this man not to die? You see, what Mary, Martha, and some of the Jews were saying is, Lord, don't you care? Don't you care? Lord, don't you care about what's taking place? Lord, don't you, you could have kept him from dying. Lord, don't you care? Just And you know what they were really saying when they said this? When they said, Lord, don't you care? You see, it was a two-day journey. They lived in Bethany. Jesus was in Jerusalem. It was a two-day journey, and the Jews believed that when a person died, if they were dead for three days, and their body began to stink, then that was it. There was no hope. Well, Jesus showed up on the fourth day, and He did that intentionally. In fact, He waited two days to leave. And then he showed up on the, on the fourth day there. And that's what people were getting. Don't you, you could have been here on time. You could have been here on time, but you waited. And if, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And you, you, you caused the blind to see and the, the deaf to hear. You've done all these miracles. You, if you would have been here, you could have fixed the problem. Of course, I think everybody knows that he did fix the problem. But I want you to know that why Jesus, why did Jesus wait? Why did Jesus let them go through this trial in their life? Well, one, it was to show his power. Two, it was to increase their faith and to realize who he was. But you know what else it was? It was because he cared. Because he cared about Mary and Martha and Lazarus and the people. You say, how do you know that? Go back to where it said he groaned in the spirit. Go back to where it said he wept. What was happening? Jesus was hurt. Jesus was hurt. He was hurt because people didn't recognize that he could fix the problem because they didn't have enough faith or enough trust that he could fix the problem anyway despite three, four, five days, whatever it is. He could fix the problem. And basically they were saying, if you would have been here, the problem would have been fixed. And it bothered him because he cared for them. Things don't go, always go our way. But you know what? Jesus cares. He cares. And He don't like to see us hurt. You know the story in Mark chapter 4. Very interesting story here. You remember when the disciples were in the boat? Remember when they were in the boat? And the storm came and, and, and the disciples panicked? Now, let me tell you something you may not know. If you know the story, this is something you may not know. This was a terrible, terrible storm. This, this would be like us here in Alabama under a tornado warning with the sirens going off and you can actually see the tornado over your head. It, 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 was, that kind of, it was that kind of panic. 
You say, how do you know it was that bad? Because the people in the boat were professional fishermen. Okay? Anybody here fished all your life? Those of you fishermen? Okay? Have you ever noticed fishermen that, especially the ones that have fished for so long, they don't care about the weather most of the time. It's going to be really, really bad. I mean, it can be raining, it can be light, most of the time they're going to go anyway. And they're going to take the stuff. They, 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 they're not really worried about the weather unless it really, really gets really bad. Well, here, it had to get really bad because they were commercial fishermen. They, they were used to all sorts of weather. And then if you look and you see in Mark chapter 4, as the storm hit, notice verse number 38. Disciples run down there to the bottom of the boat. Jesus is asleep. And they wake Him up and they say, Lord, don't you care? Don't you care we're going to die? Lord, don't you care? They woke him up and said, don't you care? Now, there's something wrong with this statement. And I don't know if y'all ever caught on this. I, I just finally caught on this week. I'm a little slow. Why would the disciples say that? The storm was bad, I got it. But let me go back again. Why would they say that? If Jesus is in the boat, you're not sinking. Amen? Amen. I mean, if, it, if He's in the boat, you're not sinking. And Jesus was in the boat, they're not going to sink. I don't care what the storm is. If Jesus is in your boat, you're not going to sink. Yeah. If Jesus is in your finances, you're not going to sink. Right. If Jesus is in your relationships, you're not going to sink. If Jesus is in the midst of your spiritual life, you're not going to sink. If Jesus is in the midst of your physical problems or emotional problems, you're not going to sink. He's in the boat. Amen. The only problem is, is when Jesus is not in the boat. So, I guess the message is, get Jesus in the boat. Amen. Amen. But here they come and Jesus is in the boat. I say, don't you care? Don't you care? And this is where Jesus comes back and says, you have little faith. Of course, he stops the storms. But but here's the point. I mean, if I'm Jesus, I'm looking at it and say, hey, hey, don't you know who I am? Have you seen what I've done? Well, I'm in the boat. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. Well, you know, when Jesus is in your life, it's going to be okay. Here's the problem. We're just like the disciples. We're just like Mary and Martha. We're just like those other Jews and say, Lord, you done this, this, like, Lord, don't you care? Lord, there's a storm in my life. Don't you care? I'm in the boat. I care. I'm in the boat. Notice in Matthew chapter 9. Let me read that to you, those last few verses there. And when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted. The word fainted here means they were they were emotionally, they were just lost. Um, and they were scattered aboard as a sheep, having no shepherd. Then said he, Jesus, unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers to harvest. There's another example. Jesus was going from town to town, village to village, city to city, wherever, and he came across this one, and he looked at it. Now notice what it says. It says, and when he'd come, he was moved with what? Compassion. Compassion. You know what that means? He cared. And what he looked was, he looked at these people, and they seemed just out there as a sheep with no shepherd, no leadership, and all that. And Jesus moved, and it hurt him so bad. I would imagine Jesus had tears out of his eyes when he seen that. When you look at them, they just seem so spiritually defeated. They seem so down and out. He said, you know what? The world is filled with people like this. The world is filled like the harvest. The world is filled with people like this. You know what? Pray right now that laborers will come forth. That people will step up to the plate. People will, will teach. People will witness. People will be involved. People will, will, will take part in the Lord's ministry. People will pray. 
I mean, you could see him making this prayer request. This, and, and it says that he was moved with compassion. You see, he is a very caring father. And sometimes we just don't always realize how, how caring he is. And, and you look over and over in the Bible again, and, and you look at several examples. These were just a few to, that we mentioned. But over and over it talks about how He cares and cast out your care upon Him for He careth with you, for you. Now, going back to 1 Peter 5, 7, I know there's got to be one question in mind. That's easier said than done. How do I just drop it? Is the reason why I cannot drop it is because I don't love God enough? Is the reason why I just can't drop it or the reason why I worry about it or the reason why I get frustrated is, is because I'm not close to God as I should be? Is, is the reason I just don't love it? What's the problem? Here's the problem. We don't always realize how caring He is. We don't realize how much He loves us. And Jesus says, look, I'm asking, I'm begging, don't try to throw it. Just drop it. Don't try to cast it. Just drop it. It's too heavy of a load. Now, now, now you got two choices, really, is what Jesus is saying here. The first choice is you can keep doing what you've always done. But you know, when you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to get the same results. Right. If you ever wonder why, that's the definition of insanity. Okay? Keep that in mind. If you keep doing what you've always done and get the same results and wonder why, you're insane. Okay? And all of us have got a little insanity. Amen? Amen. Okay? So, so, sometimes we wonder. I keep doing it over and over and over again. I'm getting saying, well, you know what? It never fixes the problem. And what Jesus is saying, let, 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 me, give you, let me give you some advice here. Drop it. Cast it. Not like a rod and reel. Not like throwing it, just can't drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. And not just major things in your life, but even minor things. Again, let me read Psalms, and this is not on your handout. Psalms 103, 13. In the King James Version, it says, Like a father pitteth his children, so the Lord pitteth them that fear him. And what the word pitteth here means is actually means. Compassion. Those of you that have had children and are grown, or you currently have children, you care for them. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, you care. You, you want to provide a home. You want to provide clothing. You want to provide food. You don't want just to throw them out there and say, fend for yourself. You want to be that good father, that good mother, that good grandparent, whatever it may be. You want to provide the very best you can because you care. Right. It's true. And, and you know, sometimes children really make dumb mistakes. Amen? Amen? Oh, I know I'd get that. <laughs> they, they really, really make them so. But you know what? You care so much, you still help them. Amen. You do. And, and, and sometimes we make dumb mistakes. As adults, we, sometimes we really flub it up and we, and we just do it. And you know what? God says, I care. God says, I can fix this. And you know what? If we know how to do it, I think He's a lot better than we are. Anybody remember the passage in the book of Matthew where He says that you, being earthly fathers, know how to give good gifts to your children? And He says, uh, he says if ye be an evil, in other words, with sin in your life, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask. What is he saying? He said, I've got it. I, I know more than you. I know. I care. I have compassion upon you. I know just like your own children. You have compassion. You care for them. You want the best for them. You try this. You try that. And when they make mistakes, you pick them up. You help. What do you think I do for you? Only I do more of it. 
And I'm better at it than you are. You see, one thing I want you to leave here today with, and really, really ponder upon it this week, is God is a very caring Father. And He loves you and I more than, than we could ever comprehend. I, I know that. But think about that. And think about this too. Drop it. Just drop it. Whatever it is, that, that weight, that boulder, that rock that, that's on you, drop it. Let God handle it. I think He's better than us, eh? Amen. Would you bow your heads, please? With every head bowed and every eye closed. We're going to have a song of invitation. And during this invitation, it's, the message is clear. <coughs> Jesus loves you. It's not, it's not it, even if you don't love Him, He loves you. And maybe you're here this morning and You've never trusted Christ as your personal Savior. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? He, he took your sins, your burdens, everything that, that you used to be penalized for, He took it upon Himself and He said, I'll take it to the cross with me. Maybe you've never received Him as your personal Savior this morning. I'm going to ask you if you would, during this invitation, when we start singing, if you've never received Christ as your Savior, if you would just come forward and say, Brother Mike, I, I need to be saved. Maybe, maybe you're here this morning, you've been saved, but you've never been scripture baptized. I want to tell you, Jesus thought so much about it that He did it Himself. He, he even set the tone. He, he, he set the criteria. He even did it Himself. He, he went and He got baptized. Maybe you need to come this morning and set a date to where you can be baptized. Maybe you're here this morning and you'd like to join the church. And this is where God's calling you. Why don't you come this morning? Maybe, maybe you just want to come and, I don't know, maybe just have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God. Maybe you want to come down here in the front pews, this altar, and just kneel down and just, maybe there's something that's burdening you. Maybe there's something that's just, you just don't know how you're going to make it. Maybe you just need to come and say, Lord, I need to drop it. I need to cast it. And Lord, just drop it. Lord, I, I've never done it this way. Lord, it's not the way I'm used to, but Lord, what I'm used to is not working. And Lord, I'm, I'm just dropping. Or maybe you want to come and thank Him for being such a caring Father. Whatever God lays on your heart this morning, just think about it. How much He truly, truly loves you. And He backs it up. He cares for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come to you this morning, God, it's uh, something we've always said. We know the phrases that you care for us. We even know the verse. But God, there's something lacking there in our lives sometimes. God, I know we can't fully comprehend it all. But Lord, I know and we know that you care for us. And Lord, help us just to realize more and more each and every day how much you really love us. Help us to look at the situation with the Israelites and how over and over they're turned their backs on you. But you still love them. You still, to this day, they're your chosen nation. Lord, let us think about the times that we've turned our backs on you. Just like them. You still love us. Lord, when we're in the family of God, through being born again and through being adopted, you never kick us out. You never, despite no matter what we do in life, you never ever say, you're no longer part of the family. You never ever say, I don't like you anymore. You might not approve of the things we do, 
but you never, ever quit loving us. Lord, that's a lot. That's a lot to understand. But help us to get closer to you. Help us to get plugged in and get connected to what you're trying to teach us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.